thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to go into the Word in a minute. I trust that you're looking after yourself wherever you are and you're trusting the Lord for hope. We've had a wonderful time worshipping and I'm encouraging you where you are at home, please continue to worship God. There's many ways to worship and today, in fact, we will be concluding. Welcome to the um, congregation. We have a small number of uh, our congregation that um, still here with us so welcome to everyone and then uh, we will be concluding the um, series on thanksgiving today as planned by the grace of god and then we're going to mention worship not just mention we're going to look into worship a bit more i love worshiping i just love being lost in the presence of god and there's um, so much i'm still asking the lord to teach me about worship so what we're going to share today is not going to be exhaustive that that's it. There's so much. And later on, at some point, God willing, we'll pick up worship again because there's so much that can be said and, and there's so much we still want the Holy Spirit to teach us. So uh, allow me to begin in prayer. Father God, thank you for the grace you have given us. To be alive today, we are grateful. We thank you for this time. We want to open up the scripture. We want to look into the scripture and see what you are saying to us. Encourage us today, even through the word, Lord. Inspire us. Teach us something new. We pray. Bless this time in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I am counting on you, as always, to speak to us. Use this tongue for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So please grab your Bible where you are at home because we have several Bible uh, verses that we'll be looking and I'll mention a few because of time we we'll just make reference to them and uh, please take the moment to pause me <laughs> you're allowed to pause and open the scripture and look into it yourself first of all and then please come back and press play again <laughs> if need be for those who are here uh, um, thank you so much again one more time to um, open up the scripture with us. We've been looking at Thanksgiving the past month. We dedicated the whole month at Ponty saying we're going to be um, praising God. We're going to be thankful. We're going to uh, look at ways to thank the Lord and what benefits there is even into it. We looked at so many um, angles of what Thanksgiving does to us and what benefit we can dig out from that. And so we uh, want to open up with the key verses, which is 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. We looked at that and say that it is God's will expect us to thank him at all times. And we also had 1 Chronicles 16 that says, Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering to him. And come before him, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. He is holy. He deserves our worship. So we look at benefits of um, having combining thanksgiving to worship last Sunday. I just love worshiping God. And today, you look around us in the building, it's hard to worship as we know normally because most people know worship means put the song on begin to sing but worship is more than just singing what do you do when the government says to you you can't sing when you go to church so is that mean you stop worshiping god you can worship with your heart you can worship with your lifestyle you can worship while you're walking your dog you can worship God by just giving him glory. You can worship God by encouraging your brother or your sister in the Lord. There are ways that your body can glorify the Lord. And, and it's taken back into the scripture. Let's open to Isaiah 6, 1 to 4, and we'll see a picture of true worship in heaven. Every time that we stop worshiping God, worship continues up in heaven. Angels are singing. 24 7 Isaiah 6 1 to 4 will read it says in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord high and exalted seated on a throne 
and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling one to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doors burst, and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. That is quite a picture that can grab your heart as our worship is happening in heaven. Worship when I'm not worshiping in heaven, angels are worshiping him. The same passage is painted differently in the book of Revelation, Revelation 4, 8, it says in the Revelation 4, 8, those seraphim are described as living creatures, living creatures. But what grabs me, you read Revelation 4, 8 to 11, your own time, but I, I just like that it says day and night, they never stop saying holy, holy, holy. So every time you take a moment to worship God, you join in into that team of angels singing holy to God 24-7. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Every time you stop to worship, you join in with what doesn't stop. A mechanism in heaven that does not stop 24-7. So what is worship? Worship is a heart thing. Worship is connecting your heart to the heart of God in his presence. This is how I, I describe it, the way I understand throughout my life, my Christian life, I have learned to worship God. And I have learned that when you put on the music, you do this, you could dance, you can lift up your hand. In a moment, we look at how there are many ways to worship. And it's very biblical. But for me, I describe worship that, this is how I wrote down, I understand worship is an attitude of the heart in the presence of God. It's when we turn our heart, our attention toward our maker and we give him praise and adoration. This is my definition. I will read it again. Worship is the attitude of the heart in the presence of God. Where is the presence of God? Everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all time. So you could worship him. In his presence everywhere. You decide when you enter in and join into that team, host of angels singing holy, holy. You might not say the word holy, but as you turn your heart to God, that's as if you're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Worship is the attitude of the heart in the presence of God. It's when you turn your heart, when I turn my heart and my attention towards my maker, the one who made me, and give him praise and adoration. So worship is not dependent on how loud the music is. Now we're praying, worship a loud sound or a fast, or now it's a slow, slow, slow sound. Now that's worship. No. However, all these things like uh, instruments, playing instrument, it could be drum, it could be music, words of guitar, whatever is instrument, singing, it's channels that he does to prepare. It's, it's just a, it's a mechanism that facilitates our heart in a way that, oh, the music is helping to uh, dispose my heart to worship, to prepare my heart, to focus on the Lord. So these are channels that helps, instrument rather that helps singing, but it's not because we play louder or it's not because we play the instrument or sang. Worship comes from the heart. So when the government say you can't sing, you can actually be quiet and still worship the Lord. Turning your heart to your maker, connecting. I like to say connect to God, connecting to heaven. 
There's heaven waves going on, but it's up to you to plug into it. You could, you could go in the house and the telly is there, but until you plug it in, you won't know what's going on on the channel. So heaven host, heaven realm is still going on 24 seven. But when you decide I'm going for a walk, but all of the sudden I want to worship, oh God, you are mighty. You plug into heaven. You plug into that worship, holy, holy, holy is the Lord's God. You join into that host, heavenly host. There are many forms of worshipping, from bowing down to clapping your hands. Your life itself as your devotion can be a form of worship. But I want you to note, those who are taking note, maybe at home or whatever or here, I want you to note that we praise God because most of the time, when we went through the Thanksgiving, remember I kept telling you, when someone has got a thanks, a genuine Thanksgiving heart, usually praise is not far off. Because someone starts by saying, oh God, I thank you for you are good. And they find themselves saying, I adore you. I extol you. You are magnificent to God. There's no one like you. Because when you have a genuine heart that presenting that offering, remember we just read, give an offering to God. Worship his holy name. So that thanksgiving heart you present it as an offering, it turns into praise, it turns into adoration. And sometimes it's hard to differentiate praise. We praise God and we thank him for what he has done. But we worship him for who he is. For instance, we thank God and we praise him for what he has done. Remember uh, when we went through the fireproof messages uh, by the way check it out and if you have it's good to go back to it again remember when the children of israel came out yeah they came out of egypt and god opened up the way for them in exodus 15 when they came out they began to thank him they began to extol his name. They began to say, look at what the Lord has done. He has scavenged the chariot of Pharaoh. He has opened up the way for us. So when they began to praise him by singing song, they began to thank him for what he has done. Oh God, look at what you've done. You've healed my brother. You've saved me. You've done this. We praise God and we thank him for what he has done. And that's no hard to do. Because you can just begin to look at what he did for you 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 3 years ago, yesterday, today, you are alive. You begin to open up your mouth and, and realize that, God, I'm alive today. You have done it. It's the Lord's doing for me to be alive. So you thank him for what he has done in your life. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my friend. Oh, my friend is alive. How many have lost other friends? Lord, for those who are behind, you thank him, you praise him. You establish his excellence for what he has done, but you worship. The difference with worship is you begin to just acknowledge who is you are god you are amazing you are awesome you are el shaddai you are the one who heal yahweh rafa you are god most high you wish worship comes up by acknowledging by saying who god is why do we worship in the book of genesis 1 to 20 uh, you see you look at genesis chapter 1 26 to 27 you will see the bible saying that mankind were created in the image of god we are god's creation that tells you it takes so much pride into what he has done therefore it's easy to see why he expects of his creation to give him praise to worship him because we are his creature we he created us it says in isaiah 43 7 i'm going to mention quite a few verses just write that down isaiah 43 7 it says everyone who is called by my name that's god speaking it says everyone who is called by my name whom i created for my glory whom i formed i and i made he has formed you he has formed me 
He has created us for his glory. So we worship him because he has made us. We give him back the glory. He has created us for his glory. I like Psalm 100. Psalm 100 also paint a nice picture of why we should worship God, how we should worship him. There are ways to worship him. It says that when you worship God and you praise him, his presence comes. It's like a guarantee. Yeah, you know when you buy something and say, this is a guarantee that if something breaks, you can always come and exchange. You have a guarantee. When you worship God, you have a guarantee that God's presence comes. So you could be in your kitchen worshiping. You could be walking, just turning your heart. Remember, it doesn't have to be singing. It doesn't have to be playing an instrument or whatever. It could be just turning your heart to God and thinking of who he is, what he has done for you. You praise him and worship him. And so when you do that, you guarantee the presence of God coming because he promised. He says in Psalm 22 verse 3, he says that, but you are holy, or you are informed in a holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. That's the amplified version of Psalm 23. Bottom line, it says that, God, you are holy because you come in the praises of your people. When your people are praising you, when your people are worshiping you, you come. It's like a guarantee God is here. When you're worshiping him, God comes. His presence comes. Psalm 100, let leave Psalm 100, it says, shout to the Lord ways of worshiping God. Shouting. That's why it is very frustrating, really, at this time. For people who come to church, you can't shout, you know, because of what's going on. We have to respect uh, the government's rule. You can't shout to avoid spreading the virus. Uh, chances, risks of spreading virus. So, but it's very biblical, and I need to mention that it is in the Bible. Shouting. You could be in your house. Give a shout to God, okay? You could be walking on your own. Give a shout. It says, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And he says, verse 4, enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. I like that verse 4 says, enter his gate with thanksgiving. Remember when we started the year saying we want to be able a people who thanks the Lord genuinely, who turn our heart remembering what is done and be quick to say thank you for every little progress that has taken place. We're quick to say, oh, Father, thank you. We give you praise for that. It says, it's like when it says enter his gate with thanksgiving, it's like in those days where you have to come to the gate to see the priest because there's different section before you can come to the holy of holies for me i read that it's like don't bother even coming if you don't have thanksgiving don't bother enter his gate with thanksgiving it's like your ticket to come in is thanksgiving heart i'm ready to thank god i'm ready to express how good he is then you can come that's the passcode thanksgiving before you come before you begin to ask for anything or pray for anything enter his gates begin by saying who he is how great he is where do we worship god anywhere just like thanksgiving because ephesians 4 6 says one god and father of all who is over all through all and in all god is omnipotent is all powerful, omnipresent. Is present. It's, a, it's one of the attributes of God. Is anywhere your guarantee is in your bathroom. Is right there. So don't be shy 
wherever you are is just plug in plug in and begin to worship plug into the host of angel joining where they are saying holy holy 24 7 worship him just like thanksgiving anywhere non-stop god is good how to worship god in the scriptures we have throughout the you have ways where it says clap your hands you have people bowing down it's all scriptural it's so we don't have to be you know like statue still and worshiping god you can if you want to because we said it's a hard thing in the first place but it's also there's something powerful i want to draw your attention for the sake of time, I've reduced it to just two points that I'm going to mention to two powerful forms of active praise that you do something. It's an active praise. But first, let's mention you can praise God um, by bowing down. You can praise God by clapping your hand. It's in the description. Uh, you can praise by, by shouting. It's been mentioned, Psalm 100, by singing. Psalm 47 say, clap your hand, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy you know they they tease us the pentecostal say some people say they're happy clappy people oh you go to that kind of church because we're happy we clap you know in normal times we are loud it is in the scripture to be loud to clap to manifest how we feel toward our god clap our hands shout sing psalm 47 says God has ascended and means shout of joy say even through the shout God can come down because your shout is not just any shout, it's shouting towards Yahweh. He knows that kind of shout. Like a mother, I know when my son is shouting, that's it, that's just playing. And I know when that shout, it needs me, I'm coming. So Yahweh, when you shout, he knows it's coming from that heart. That's a joyful shout there. My children need me. I have to go. And he comes and he descends. It's in the Bible, Psalm 47, 5 to 8. He says, God has sent amid shout of joy. The Lord amid sounding of trumpet. Sing praises to God. There's because singing is help us. Sometimes you don't feel like praying, but you maybe start just by singing a little song. Before you know it, your heart is warming up up to God. Your heart, your hands are going up. Why? And I'm going to mention about the hand. You come in churches, you see some people, I go, I lift up my hand. And sometimes some people who don't understand my thing, like it's a religious thing that you just do, you know. The music starts and you lift your hand. It's, they do this kind of thing. I need to tell you that it's in the scripture and also something very powerful about lifting up the hand. It says, um, I want to mention two, two Hebrew words of active praise and worship, which involve hands. Two Hebrew words that means worship. I'm going to, don't worry about how to spell it. I will put it in the description bo box later. It's Toda and Yada. Toda, T-O-D-A-H. It means, it's an Hebrew word that means active uh, praise and worship. It means toda means thanks offering. This action involves the speaking of the excellence of the person with a focus on the personal gratitude of the speakers. Like I say, God, oh, you are so good. The toda one, you have done this for me. You have you have saved me. You have delivered me. So toda is a thanks offering with that action that involves the speaker, uh, um, the speaking of excellence of uh, the person you're thanking. In this case, our case, God, you're thanking him. But I want to draw your attention more to a word that has blessed my life for many years. Every time I lift up my hand, I remember these words and I know how powerful it is. It's yada. Yeah. Why? A D A H Y for uh, Yolanda or yellow A uh, A A for Apple Alpha D for Delta A for Alpha H for Hotel Yada. It's a verb. It's a verb and it's an Hebrew word which is a verb meaning a doing. When I looked into the word, it said it's a doing word, and this Hebrew word means to shoot a bow, to throw or to throw down. 
And when you go into the scripture, you will find that word that's been translated in a few passages that says, give thanks, yada. For instance, in Psalm 134, verse 2, it says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. And also in 1 Timothy 2.8, the Apostle Paul also urges us, he said, Therefore I want you, men and women, to everywhere to pray, lifting up your hand without anger or dispute. You know, many times the devil does not want you or me to know the power there is when we do that. If you do it as a religious sign, there's nothing into it. But there is power into it, and I'm going to show you. It's got a warfare strategy, spiritual warfare strategy into it. Do you know that worship also can be warfare? Time of spiritual warfare of a higher state, higher level. I'll give you an example in First Chronicle. For instance, you know the story of King David. He had a track record, yeah? track record of winning battles winning always get, uh, getting victory most of the times and then here finding the scripture that this guy knew the secret of spiritual warfare in terms of worship and thanksgiving to the highest level and that's the word yada in first chronicles 16:4. It says, he, meaning King David, King David appointed some of the Levite to minister before the ark of the Lord, to extol, to thank. And that word, you look at in the translation, it says, to yada and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Remember that. He was always winning. And before he goes to war, he leaves people there say, he appoints people to just continually yada. He says, because remember, I just explained to you, it's a doing word of the lifting up of hand. Yeah? To shoot a bow. It makes me think, when you shoot a bow, you know, you don't, you don't do it with your hands down. You always do it with your hands up. You're ready to fight. It's as if you're saying, I'm fighting with praise. I'm fighting with praise while I'm praising God. While I'm worshipping my God. Yada. He's fighting for me. Second Chronicle 20, 18 to 22. There's another example there. And you will see that word yada is there. In your Bible, it will say give thanks. But there is a story there. When you read that, it's a powerful story. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah at the time. He heard that there was an army of the Moabites coming towards them. So he was petrified. But then the Bible says it did something amazing there. God saved the entire nation of Judah and Jerusalem as they simply began to yada the Lord. Instead of going toward the enemy with guns ready to fight, well, I'm saying guns, but you know in them days, I mean weapons. But they put in front of the army, they put uh, um, priests, they put people who were yadaing, they were praising God. What a strategy that is. Let's just quickly read it, it's powerful. It says, Second Chronicles 20, 18 to 22. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Korahite and Korahite stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert to take over. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophet, and you will be successful. Verse 21, it says, After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. Remember, he's holy. That's why we worship him. 
And then it says, as they went out ahead to, to the head of the army, saying, give thanks. That word is the yada is translated. Yada to the Lord. Lift up your hands. Spiritual warfare time of worship. Yada to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Wow, praise God. As they began to sing and praise, verse 22, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. That's when you know I'm lifting up my hand something's happening in the spiritual realm. Sometimes I don't know what to do. So you can't sing, but you can lift up your hand. Yada. It's a sign. Sometimes I might be at home and maybe I just feel like, you know, I feel down or I, whatever is going on, I don't know what to pray for. Maybe I'm just walking. I went in the living room. Nothing's stopping me. You see me sometimes, I just go. I know I say yada, yada. It's a, it's a war cry sound that the Lord comes in. You worshiping him, he's taking care of your enemy. How powerful is that? I want you to remember that word. He has blessed me that word for many years. That is the reason. There are many reasons. It's in the scripture. We haven't got time to go into that, but... For me, I lift up my hands and I remember, Yada, thank you. As I'm thanking God and I'm worshiping him, at the same time, my enemy should tremble because I've just said, Yada, a war cry. That God knows the signal. He knows the code. And I want you to remember that as well. Let's aspire as we continue throughout the year. I know we're bringing this um, series to an end today, but let our aspiration be that our lifestyle is a lifestyle of thanksgiving and worship, and we worship again. It's hard sometimes to worship God when things are hard, but Jesus said that God is spirit, therefore those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In John 4, 24, he said that. And so I want to also encourage you that when it comes to worship, remember what I first said at the beginning, it's a hard thing. Because otherwise, even the lifting up our hand, if you're not careful, it will become also a traditional thing, a religion thing that you just do automatically. Oh, yeah, that's the music starting. Let the worship, let my hands put up. Otherwise, people won't know I'm spiritual or whatever. But it has to be Connect to everything, spirit, soul, body. Your heart connects to God. Even as you lift up your voice, you, your, 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 your hand, you lift up your hand, or whether you do not lift up your hand, whether you are quiet, whether you're singing or walking, a lifestyle that is singing praise to God, coming from the heart, in spirit and in truth. How do you worship, somebody say, how do you worship in spirit and in truth? Remember your heart. You turn your mind off. You try your best, whatever you were cooking, the kitchen, the, the, the roast, whatever it is for a minute, just switch it off in your mind. Whatever's been preoccupying you, yeah, you switch it off and you turn on your spiritual button that connects you to God. Or in other words, I like to say connect, connect, you connect. And when you do, remember that passage we read, there's angel singing you might not worship now but every second that's going 24 seconds holy 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 is the lord god and all you do is just that minutes that you decide to worship you are plugging into that my goodness what an honor what if god did say you're not needed i've got angels already i don't need you he allows me, I like to say little me, you allow me to also join in 
Wow. Holy. That's the honor you have every time you stop and worship. In spirit and in truth. And in your own time, look at Matthew 15. In Matthew 15, Jesus explained the difference because the pa the Pharisees and teachers of the law, they were the, of the law. I mean, they were puzzled. They kept coming to him, trying to ask him. But your disciples are doing this instead of doing that. We normally do this. And Jesus said, "You are foolish." He called them names. He says, "Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah was right." He said, Matthew fifteen six to nine. He said, in verse eight, he said, "These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me." That's where you pick up the key word. Jesus saying heart. It's a heart matter. Where is your heart when you're worshiping? Where is your heart connected to God during that time? You have all this other time to go and do your business, watch your telly, do whatever you have. It's just that one minute, whatever is that second, say worship time. Connect that time, that connect it and realize the weight of it by plugging into a host of heaven singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Oh, Holy Spirit, teach us to learn how to do it right. I'm still trying. I am still learning. I'm going to bring a message to a close now. But I pray that somehow you have learned throughout the whole series the heart of genuine thanksgiving. There's more to it than just saying, Cheers, JC, Jesus Christ. Thanks for doing that. That was cool, man. There's more, there's more to it by being genuine and thanking him and taking time to remember what he's done in the past and worship. Oh, there's still more about it. I haven't got the whole time to go throughout it. Like I said, this is not exhaustive. We'll come back to it sometime in the future. But for the sake of time and today, I want you to remember those words we mentioned today. I pray that you be encouraged that you're not doing just a tradition. You're not doing just a religious thing when you lift up your hand or when you're worshiping. You are actually saying yada. For me, that word, it blesses me every time that I don't care who thinks what. If I can lift up my hand, I will. There are times where I jump up and down literally, you know, there's many ways to worship God. We are not limited by singing. We are not limited by uh, whatever we're told. You can't do this, you can't do that. I'm gonna bring this to a close. But remember all the things we, we talked about. Go over them. You can't just listen one message. Tick, I know that sometimes it's good to go back over them and start again. Pause every time. Open that scripture. What are you saying to me? Practice it. What is he saying? This word. Go into it and begin to practice it. And the Lord is just going to do wonders. When you're lacking the ability, say, I'm not naturally able. I'm shy. I can't actually just let go in worship. Ask the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Romans 5, 5, it says that it's him who has spread out the love of God into our heart. So it's him, the Holy Spirit, is going to help us. When we're lacking the ability to just plug in, show me how, help me that it becomes easy, Holy Spirit, ask him, and he will. Father, we thank you for this time, we thank you for this series, we thank you for the things we've learned about the benefits of thanksgiving, the power thereof, how you reposition us even when we come to worship at your feet, oh Lord Jesus. You're able to change our state from a state of victim to victors. Oh Father, you make us triumphant, victorious. It's amazing how you provide even through thanksgiving and worship, you teach us something. Oh, thank you. We give you praise today. We give you all the glory. Holy Spirit, Help us yeah, to continue and to go in our own time to dig into your word and open it up and learn even more. Teach us in our private time, Holy Spirit. 
what you are saying to us today. Help us to learn to turn our hearts to you, O God, and let you deal with our concern, the things that concerns us. You did that for Jehoshaphat and the whole of Judah and Jerusalem. When they just began to worship you, you, the Bible say, you set up ambushes for the enemy. Father, there are so many things we are dealing with. We ask you even as we worship you for who you are to take care of our enemies, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be exalted forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, be blessed as you've been listening um, to the message and watching. And I encourage you, as you continue in your own time, just don't stop digging to the Word of God even more. Let the Holy Spirit take you on a journey, a private tour with the Scripture.